Coming up in all angles, the PNP presidential race is near. Lisa Hanna hopes to take home the victory, but will it happen? Every single Jamaican, they need to know that I will not let them down. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you so very much for being with us. Now, before we start our conversation with Lisa Hanna, Kalisha Williams has this brief overview of her political career. The name Lisa Hanna was known to many Jamaicans long before politics. It started when she was just 15 years old on popular television program Rapping. Then in 1993, 18-year-old Lisa Hanna took home the crown for Jamaica in the Miss World competition. It wasn't until 2007 that Hanna transitioned to politics, having been elected as Member of Parliament for Southeastern St. Anne. Since then, she has been serving in the constituency, having won four times over the past 13 years. By 2008, she was the party's chairperson for Region 1, which comprised Trelawney and St. Anne, a post she held for eight consecutive years. Hannah served as Minister of Youth and Culture from 2012 to 2016. All of these young people that we cater to look at Jamaica through different eyes, but they all want one single thing. They want to improve the quality of their lives and make sure that they have something to live up to for their families. And that's what we have to do for them. When the PNP lost the 2016 general election, she was appointed to the shadow cabinet as spokesperson on foreign affairs and foreign trade, the position she currently holds. The difference perhaps between your approach and our approach is that we see Jamaica as the beacon of CARICOM and the Caribbean at large that doesn't operate only in self-interest. On top of that, she has been serving as treasurer of the party since 2018. Now she's looking to bag the top post in the PNP. So today I am taking this step, a very special step, to follow in the footsteps of the great leaders of our movement to become the president of the most enduring and the best political movement in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Campaigning on the mantra, bring back the love, Hannah told delegates and other stakeholders recently why she's the right woman for the job. There have been five presidents in the PNP. If successful, Lisa Hanna would go down in history as the second woman to become president of the party after Portia Simpson Miller's first attempt in 1992. But will she get her wish come November 7? Kalisha Williams for All Angles. Thank you so very much, Kalisha. Thank you so much for coming in, Ms. Hanno. Thank now, you. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you said you had 10 of the 14 MPs supporting you, 63 of the 97 yes. councillors. You still hold that in terms of your numbers? Yes, I do. Yes, I Spoke do. to Mark Golding on the program last week, and he said, Ms. Hanna's numbers are <laughs> off. He says the parliamentary support, MP support, he said it's about 50-50, and he said he's, quote, comfortably ahead in delegates. Well, I think Mark would actually say that. I'm a little bit more experienced in political organization and the nuances and the relationships of the PMP. And I, I have sat one-on-one -on -one with persons. Um, some people don't want to come out publicly. Some people can't. But I'm holding fast to my numbers. So you want to tell us who are the 10 MPs you have? Not right now, but what I will say is that um, certainly Denise Daly from Region 4, the Region Chairman from Region 4, Maurice Guy, Maurice Guy, Dr. Maurice Guy from Central St. Mary, he's also the Chairman of, of Region 2. We also have Natalie Nita, who is um, MP for North Central St. Catherine and my campaign manager, Mikhail Phillips, who is a Vice President, and I, I could go on, but I'm going to hold to that. But I will tell you in time. 
Now, on November 7, about 3,300 delegates will be mm -hmm. voting for the presidency, the president of the party. The winner will become opposition leader and maybe prime minister at some point. Mm -hmm. Critics like Gordon Robinson have called the process undemocratic. You said in your manifesto, if I could call it that, yeah. that you're committed to expanding voting rights and that group members, not just delegates, should be able to vote. So one member, one vote, that, yes, that's where you're going? Yes, I believe going? that. I believe that. One of the hallmarks of the PMP is actually listening to the voice of the people. And we are a grassroots organization, and we get our policies. I, I, back when Norman Manley moved the motion and said to the world that, look, we're not going to trade with South Africa, that actually came from a group in Manchester. And so we take our messages, we take our policies from the ground up, and I think it is unfair and undemocratic to just have one person who is a member of the group ethos, who the group is a person who plans in the constituencies and really are the activists, to only give one person that vote. And I think it should be extended to all members of the group. I think it should also be extended to individual members because right now the PMP also needs to go out there and revive and rejuvenate and renew the senses of, of the country. And we need to go on a massive recruitment drive to really reposition who we are in the minds of the public and what we stand for, which are progressive policies to move the country forward. So I do believe in one man, one vote. I've always believed that, and I think it needs to happen within the party. It's one of those things, though, that the party has been talking about for a little while, and it sure. could very well be in another four years, in another eight years, whoever is the next candidate right. for presidency again, that we're having the same conversation. So having said it, though, is it something that, that you're committing to go out there yes, and push for change? Absolutely. The, the, my experiences as a member of parliament, as a region chair, um, certainly walking all 63 constituencies and working with people, we take a long time sometimes to enact change. And one of the things that we have to do, and I've said in the way forward, which is at lisahanna.com, and it's, as you said, my personal manifesto coming from the ground, is with that, that we need a revolutionized secretariat. So the general secretary, when I become president, should not be a parliamentarian. And they should be bolstered by four general secretaries. So we would have, at the beginning of the election cycle, really the time to implement the kind of revolutionary renewal that's important. For a long time, we've been focusing on internal contests, vice president's races, um, presidential races. We had a slew of by-elections in the last um, election term and in the last parliamentary year. And now I think we can settle down a little bit, take a deep breath and build from the ground up and we have the time to do it. So I'm proposing that in the next 36 months, we will have an unbeatable PMP if we do it right and if we go back to the people and stay with the people. You mentioned, as you said, or you outlined rather, the plan for revamping the party, including the secretariat. You mentioned there the, um, the role of the general mm -hmm. secretary. You spoke of having IT experts on yes. board and so on. But uh, Bonne Brock. The PMP just <laughs> sent home workers. So yeah. where's the money for all this to come from? Empty promises? No, it's not an empty promise. I mean, the, the general secretary is a salaried position, and we will continue to have that as a salaried position. And we are also a volunteer organization. Many persons come to the PMP actually supporting the PMP. At all times, there are several persons who fund the day-to-day -day activities of the party. As members of parliament, we do give a contribution from our salaries, as do councillors. And we're going to have to find creative ways. I can tell you, as treasurer, we went out there and we pounded the pavement and we actually raised money for the general election. So we're now going to have to get a little bit creative. We've lost basically half of our MP quota. So a part of that is, is not there. Our groups pay dues. But also, um, with a new face of the party, and if we bring back the unity and bring back the love, people will, as they have continued to do, fund our activities in the party. And I look forward to, to making sure that that happens, Dion. You mentioned bring back the love, which mm -hmm. is your campaign slogan. Isn't it incongruous, though, to have that as your slogan on the one hand, and on the other hand, there are all these allegations mm -hmm. about you, saying you're a divisive figure, yeah. you're hard to work with, you, that you've been unable to unite your own constituency. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be this huge disconnect between the public persona and your public campaign and what is being said by mm -hmm. people who have been close to you. Well, I think that narrative has been perpetuated by persons who really have a personal agenda. And oftentimes people don't look at the, the other side of who Lisa Hanna is, who Lisa Hanna is as the region chair, 
who actually worked in the region to bring it to victory, who Lisa Hanna is as a Minister of Culture, who led that ministry to significant strides and had a, a all female um, managers and a permanent secretary, who Lisa Hanna is in terms of standing with the PMP, working with our leaders in the PMP, and making sure that I've never turned my back on the People's National Party. There's, there's really no doubt that there are persons who, from time to time, have personal agendas, they always have. And typically for persons like myself, women in politics, when, when you have someone who is strong and takes strong decisions and strident decisions and are not easily l broken a lot of times rather than saying that they are strong political, they come out as divisive. I mean, we've had situations where there are internal conflicts in other constituencies where you've had councillors cross the floor to the GLP, but they don't get the same questioning and the same kind of um, expose. And I think over time that has, has bedeviled and plagued who I am because of that narrative that keeps being perpetuated. And I imagine that um, over time people will realize that, that that's not exactly true because there are several persons who have come out endorsing me who were a part of the other campaign last year and who were not supporting me. There's one young woman, Rachel A. Thompson, who, who said, look, you know, I remember driving to St. Anne to campaign against her. And over time I ended up working with her because she reached out. Karen Cross is the same thing. Ryan Small is the same thing. So there are persons who said that, look, we never really knew you. And working with you, it's like a complete different situation. So bringing back the love for me is going out there, Dion. I've, my political experience over the three terms going into my fourth term has taught me a lot. I've also seen the electorate change dramatically. And they want more listening. All right, from, hold their, that, from their members of hold parliament that, Hold that leaders. thought for me. We're at the break. Let's go to our first break. We come back in a moment. Remember our hashtag. It's TBJ All Angles. Soon come.